the wife told me that for his birthday, she allowed him oh, no. to have sex with her, with the U.S. championship belt on, and to say, I'm coming. You're blinged out here. It's good to see you again. It's always good to be seen. Ba back home for you. Yeah, man. Down in the dirty, dirty. Well, I, technically, we're in the 954, but, yeah. you know, it's just 305. You're like, like Pitbull, Mr. 305. Actually, I'm the original Mr. 305. Oh. I was Mr. 305 before he was, but now he's Mr. Worldwide. That's so, right. Now, so we don't have any dispute. So that means you can still be Mr. 305. I was never going to stop. <laughs> this is correct. He never kicked out of the Undertaker's choke slam, right? Mm. You know, so. Oh. Who'd, who'd he ever beat? You know, so. Would he kick out of the Undertaker's choke slam? Absolutely not. No, no, no. But I, well, I don't know. He Beats a lot of people on the charts, so he seems to be doing all right. You know, so. When you found out you were going to kick out of Taker's chokeslam, were you like, oh. I didn't. Oh. I didn't. He, uh, well, let's put it like this. Somebody was supposed to have made a save. They weren't there. And then I heard this low growl, kick out. <laughs> <laughs> so I kicked out of the chokeslam yeah. because somebody else fucked up. Yeah. That's fine. It's, it's, it's YouTube. We can say whatever we want here. Cool. Well, who was supposed to come and make the save? Uh, the not-so-great Khali. He <laughs> Was he just too slow coming down? Uh, he just, he, he had no clue what was going on. He was still. <laughs> the language barrier there, not I think. Not even, not even. He was just disinterested. You know? he, had, he would do that from time to time. How often are you working shows like this one? Uh, man, this is what I do now, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. I'm, at, uh, I'm 44. I'll be 45 in October. You look great, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and, you know, I'm at a point in my career where, I, like, I don't want to be contractually obligated to anyone. You know, if, mm -hmm. if I was back in the WWE, I'd be on the road 250, 275 days a year. And, you know, when you're in it, it's all you know. Sure. But once you get away from it, it's kind of like, eh, I don't know if I want to do that anymore, you know. Yeah. So uh, I work on the weekends and uh, I stay, fortunately, you know, I, I stay very busy. And I got a son now. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm home so I can see him during the week and I have some semblance of a life. And. Friday, Saturday, you catch me somewhere, and somewhere around the world or somewhere across the country wrestling, and then usually home on Sunday, and man, life is good. So you have the ability to be a dad during the week and a wrestler on the weekends? Uh, yeah, and now my son is old enough, he'll be, he'll be four in October. Wow. So now he's old enough to realize, daddy fight. <laughs> daddy fight? Daddy fight? I'm like, uh-oh, oh boy. So, Would he want to get into this one day? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I mean, it's, I've, I've talked about it with a few people, and I would like him to do something else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm never going to encourage him to do this. But if he gets old enough and goes, hey, Dad, that's what I want to do, then I wouldn't stand in his way. But I would try to uh, maybe persuade him to take a different path. I, we should point out that you are wearing the England shirt because there's going to be a lot of people in the U.K. watching this. Oh, yeah. And England pulled off a big win today. Yes, they did. I, I am, uh, I'm an Anglophile. And it's funny, you know, this is South Florida, so I grew up watching PBS Channel 2. So I was watching Doctor Who and Doctor in the House and Are You Being Served and uh, what else did we watch back then growing up? Just uh, all this, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, BBC programming. And uh, I just, at a young age, developed this fascination with English pop culture and music and whatnot. And I used to work with a guy who was from England. I used to work... Uh, for the Miami Herald years ago delivering papers. And it just kind of like England became my team because the U.S. has never had a soccer team, <laughs> at least not one worth mentioning anyway. And, uh, you know, it's really easy to go, yeah, I'm with Brazil, or, you know. So England hasn't been good since the 60s. <laughs> that was the last time they won a, a, the World Cup. So, wow. I'm like, okay, I'll roll with England. And so now they're good. heading into the semifinals as we yeah, stand here today. Yeah. Uh, against Croatia. That's their, their next, their... Yeah. And Croatia pulled off a magnificent win. Yeah. Down to penalty, just like... Uh, when Colombia and England came down to penalty kicks, we right. shoot out, you know, so th this has been a, a phenomenal World Cup. I just feel like it was important to point this out because people would be like, why is he wearing an England jersey otherwise? Three lions, three lions. I actually know all the words to World in Motion and Barnsley's Rap. If you go on my Instagram. I, I just watched me, that, yeah. You can see me. I, I, this, this just shows you the depth <laughs> of my, my loyalty to the English national team. The last time I interviewed you, you were wearing a Turkish shirt. Because yeah, yeah. it was Johnny Vandal's yeah, shirt, and yeah. you were repping Johnny Vandal's stuff. And people were like, why is he wearing a Turkish shirt? So that's why I thought it was important to point out the English shirt Smart. here. Smart. You've done this before then, huh? I've, I've once or twice. And I know you're wearing a collar and elbow shirt. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, collar and elbow. This is from their new summer collection. 
It's like an advertisement here. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, this is a good one. Let, let's do an advertisement for sure. Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Go to collarandelbow.com yeah. and use promo code MVP for a discount. Click the link. It'll, there'll be one uh, below here. There you go. Promo code MVP, you get a discount. See how your boy's looking out for you? Look at that. Al Snow's like, thank you so much, MVP. <laughs> yeah, Al Snow's a good guy. <laughs> He's a good dude. We saw you recently on Raw 25. Mm -hmm. What was the whole process of, like, how long did they tell you before that? Or, like, when did the phone call happen, and who placed that call? Uh, I think I got a call from Mark Carano. Okay. He said, hey, you interested? I'm like... How much you paying me? What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to play poker with the... Uh... No, you know what? It was funny because I kept saying, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? And in typical WWE fashion, a lot of the time, they have no idea. <laughs> you know, they'll have, well, we're going to do this. And, I, you know, when I was there, I remember plenty of times when literally, like, doors are opening and they're rewriting the script for TV. So, right. you know, it happens all the time. And I got there and I found out what they initially had in mind, they scrapped and decided to do something else completely. And then I ended up uh, playing poker with the AP. What was the original plan? Um, I don't even remember now. I don't remember. I just, man, I get a free trip to New York. Yeah. A free pay hey, to sit in the back, drink beer, and play cards. I, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Were you hopeful that maybe it would mean more w work with WWE? No. no. <laughs> I'm as busy as I want to be, man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't want a full time schedule with WWE. I, man, I'm. I'm. I always said I would be out when I'm 45. Mm -hmm. That was my. I'll be 45 in October. So are you going to be out? No, I still feel good, man. Yeah, still you still look it. good. You still work well. Yeah, so I think uh, I think I might, you know, I think I got a couple years left. So you're going to set now. a new bench press, a benchmark? Like, all right, 48, I'm out. Uh, you know, I think I'll just take it year to year. Okay. Um, I've always said, you know, and if, if you're a fan of professional wrestling, especially on the indie scene, you know, you see guys that, you know, once upon a time were, you know, just heroes. Yeah. And they stay in the game too long. Yeah. And then they become caricatures of themselves, you know. And, and, and when it gets to the point that I can't perform at a level that I feel is adequate, then I'm, then I'm done at that point, you know. And, I mean, I've always said, too, that I want to walk away. I don't want to limp away, you know. Yeah. I'm starting to limp now, so that, that means the time, the time is near. The, the clock is running down. What's the thing that fans want to talk to you the most about? <clears throat> is there a particular match or feud? Not well, it depends. A lot of the time I get people talking about the feud me and Matt Hardy had. People yeah. always want to talk about, you know, Matt and I had a, a, an awesome feud. Yeah. Um, you know, I, a lot of people, um, it's very humbling when people say, man, you and Matt carried SmackDown in 2007. And when you think back, you know, SmackDown's roster was decimated with injuries, you know, so, you know, we were often on there two, three segments. So it was pretty cool. Um, a lot of times people want to ask me about Benoit because Benoit and I had a feud and that, that was my entry and, and with his tragic ending. Yeah. Um, and I guess the number one question that I get all the time is, when are you coming back? Right. So my answer to that is, I'll come back when CM Punk comes back. Oh. <laughs> hey, now that the lawsuit's settled, CM Punk could... Anything is possible. <laughs> Thank but you. there's Thank some you, really, really bad blood there. So <laughs> I, I don't know how it's going to go. And CM Punk just cashed a fat-ass <laughs> MMA check. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think he's all right for a while. I mean, we'll see. What do you think of the broken Matt Hardy gimmick? Uh, it's funny because, you know, like I said, Matt is one of my closer friends in the business. And um, I've always said that, you know, the, the school of thought that I came from uh, was – you know, the, the suspension of disbelief, you know, simulated combat kind of deal. And I'm a fan of, of the creativity of, and, and, and the entertainment factor. And I'm tremendously proud of Matt for reinventing himself and having this second win. Um, but I've, I've never really been a big fan of the, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, ah. How do I say it? Um, it's it's almost too comical. Okay. You know, you know. Yeah, it's very theatrical. Yeah, that's yeah, for yeah. sure. And and it's tremendously entertaining. And yeah. like I said, I love Matt to death. And and it, it's entertaining. But you know, I, I part of the reason that I left WWE to go to Japan is that I like the the realistic simulated combat. You know, so yeah. it's one of the things. Like, and I, I'll, I'll take this point, this moment to make this point. Intergender wrestling has become real real popular. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of it because I come from a different school of thought in pro wrestling. There are two schools of thought, it seems. If you're a fan of intergender wrestling, um, then you look at pro wrestling as you know, scripted entertainment, uh, 
superheroes or, you know. And if you play Mortal Kombat or, you know, one of those video games, like Chun-Li can whoop your ass, you know. Sure. But if we're doing suspension of disbelief, there's not very many women that on, on the planet that can beat me in combat. You know, if we're grappling, all right, there are some female grapplers that, yeah, they'll catch that joint or they'll catch that choke and yeah. Yeah, you tap. But not if I can punch them, you know. <laughs> not if I can kick them. And that, that kind of changes things. So if you approach pro wrestling from the way I was brought in, it's, okay, this is simulated combat, and we're trying to make the fans forget that it's predetermined, yeah. you know. Well, you can't do that when you watch a big grown-ass man and, and a woman do all kinds of, you know, really cool, you know. But, again, if you're watching The Avengers, you know, then you watch uh, Black Widow, she'll kick 10 dudes' asses, and, yeah. it's, and it's awesome. Yeah. So if that's the school of thought that you approach it, then, yeah, intergender wrestling is, is great in that regard. But if you come from that other school of thought, like, hey, we're, we're fighters, yeah. then it doesn't work so much. Could Ronda Rousey kick your ass? No, God, no. Of course not. <laughs> no? No, of course Nia not. Jax? No, no. Nia Jax might be as big as you. No, I met her. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. She, she's an awesome woman. But no, I, I mean, I'm just talking about biology, you yeah. know, physics. Yeah. You know, there's just, I, I hit way too hard. And, <laughs> and I'm, you know, I, I train jujitsu. I do competition. So yeah. I, I make grown men my size that are skilled tap out. So, yeah. <clears throat> but again, like I said, if it's just grappling, yeah. there are women, female grapplers who... Man, if I slip, they'll get it. They'll tap. Yeah. I mean, it's never happened, but I'm intelligent enough to know that it absolutely sure. could. Yeah. No question. But if you're talking about, you know, mixed martial arts where we can grapple and I can strike, yeah. then it's, you know, there's just no believability there. If we look at your career, it was WWE to New Japan's impact. What do you think is the biggest takeaway from each one? What did you learn most from working in each of those companies? Hmm. Uh, wow. I would say WWE, I learned a lot about production, television. Um, I was very fortunate that Vince McMahon actually said to me, hey, pr get involved in producing your segments. B put a hand in, in, in everything you do. Mm. And excuse me, I was given that opportunity to learn from the biggest, the best, best yeah. wrestling television production company in the world. Um, so I think that was one of the, 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 the biggest lessons I got, how to approach television, um, producing wrestling in that regard, storytelling. Um, in Japan, uh, and Japan was just a dream come true. So I was just on cloud nine the whole time I was there. And, you know, I, I guess going in Japan, there's less showmanship you don't have 20 minute promo segments and you know yeah. there's it's more sport so there's a, a, a and you know the psychology is a little different in how you approach a match so it was um, i guess the lesson there was more about emphasizing the the realism and and giving something that the fans will go i think those guys really don't like each other you know uh. um and then at impact uh i was again given an opportunity to be very hands-on I directed a lot. Um, I was given an opportunity to uh, be a lot more, um, oh man, hands-on with my segments. Creatively, I was allowed to contribute, like with the, the whole beatdown plan and, and the entrance and all. A lot of that yeah. was a, lo a lot of my concepts and ideas. So I would say at Impact, I was able to take a lot of what I learned from WWE and then in a more prominent position, put that to use yeah. where I had, you know, somebody saying, Hey, MVP, uh, you got this promo segment. Uh, can you direct it? Cause I got to go do this over wow. here. I'm like, yeah, sure. You know? And that became more and more frequent. So with that knowledge, yeah. would you want to work behind the scenes when you're done doing your work in the ring? Uh, something that, uh, you know, recently I was uh, with another wrestling company that I'm not with anymore, but I was used in that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, in that capacity, and I was working with the young guys, and it's funny, when I was working with these young guys who've never done TV, I had an opportunity to realize how much I know that I didn't realize I knew. Mm, you know, and yeah. when you're, you know, I take for granted, hey, go do this and that, and the kid's like, huh? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, you don't, okay. So, and I'd literally take him by the hand, okay, stand here, look here, do this, you know. Wow, okay. Um, and I enjoyed it, I yeah. really did, you know. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. So, the direct answer to that question is, 
Yeah, it's something that I would entertain now that a few years ago I had absolutely no interest in. Hmm. But now, if under the right circumstances, yeah, it's something I would definitely entertain. If a new wrestler is coming into the business, you'll be talking with a bunch of you know up and coming wrestlers here tonight at Coastal Championship Wrestling. What's the one piece of advice you like to give them? Uh, I usually give them two pieces of advice. Okay. Um, one, don't let anybody outwork you. Always be the hardest working yeah. individual in the ring, in the locker room, in the room. Um, and that used to be my motivation. I remember there were days that, man, I don't want to go to the gym or I don't want to train and I was tired. And then I thought, wait, there's some kid in Michigan. He wants my spot and he's going to the gym. Yeah. You know, all right, so yeah. don't let anybody outwork you. That's just good life advice. Yeah. yeah. You know? And the other one is if you want to be a professional wrestler, especially now in the age of social media where everybody's a critic, mm -hmm. you have to have thick skin. Yeah. You know, and this generation is a lot more involved in social media, you know, Twitter and Instagram. So, you know, when people have the safety of anonymity, they say terrible, terrible things. You know, you just, you know, some of the people from Star Wars I was reading, like, completely deleted their social media accounts because this, they were being abused so much by disgruntled Star Wars fans. So I could see where, hey, you can come into pro wrestling and think, hey, I'm great. People, you suck. You're awful. I'm, you uh, you know, your, your mother should have never gave birth to you, you know. So if you want to be a public figure, yeah. especially in pro wrestling, have very, very thick skin. In your social media posts, you're not afraid to get political. Was that a, a decision you, like, you, you obviously had to know making that decision. You were going to piss some people off. Sure, absolutely. I mean, I'm sure it cost me bookings and, you know, I'm sure, you know, lots of, uh, uh, people, I, people tell me, MVP, I used to like you and I don't like you anymore. Wow. Right? That's fine. But you, you know? don't care? Not at all, not at all. But the truth hurts. And, you know, I, I'm not, one of the issues that I always maintain, I'm not a liberal, I'm not a conservative, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat. I try to call it down the middle. Mm -hmm. Because no political party has a monopoly on good ideas. You know? And, you know, the whole idea of, well, I'm a Democrat, so whatever the Democrats say, I agree with. Or I'm a Republican, so, you know, right or wrong, I'm with the Republicans. You're an idiot if that's your stance, you know? And, you know, I think there are lots of issues that plague us as a society, as a race of humans, and I have a platform, and I feel that I have an obligation to use that platform to try to bring awareness to certain situations. Even if it costs, you know, some people not liking you. Uh, man, it was my job to make people <laughs> not like me when I first came into business, right? This is so, true. You know, that, that, that's fine, man. I, and I come as advertised. I'm very polarizing. Personally, people either like me or they don't. You won't meet a lot of people that go, yeah, he's all right. You know, they either like, oh, yeah, man, he's cool. Or, oh, no, I don't like that guy. You know? With that said, with your background, do you think that WWE would hire you today with your talents, with your skill set, with your build at 25, with your criminal background? Um, you know, I have no idea, man, because obviously in the last decade or so, um, certainly within the last five years, there's been a philosophical shift at the top. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, just the, the, their whole business model, who they're hiring, how they're hiring. Because I was in WWE when Vince said, I heard it from his mouth, if they're under 200 pounds and under six feet tall, I don't want to see them. So there was a period where, you know, Daniel Bryan wouldn't have been able to get hired, you yeah, know, true. during that, that window, you know. Yeah. So now, obviously, that's not the case. So I, I have no idea. But, you know, regardless... Man, I'm, I'm in a good place in life right yeah. now. So, I, you know, I couldn't care less. You, will you be coming out tonight with your old WWE entrance theme? Um, coming? No, I, I, hate, I always hated that theme. I never <laughs> liked that theme. As a matter of fact, I remember the first time they gave it to me, I was like, I, I took it home and I listened to it, and I was like, it's all right, you know. And then they called me and they said, hey, uh, Vince wants, you to, wants to talk to you in the arena. You know, so I went out by the ring. He was like, yeah, come over here, MVP, let's listen to your music. And they played it in the arena, and Vince was... You know, very unrhythmically <laughs> bopping to it. And, what do you think? If you like it, I love it, boss. You know, it's, it's, we'll go with that. You can't say no to Vince, right? Yeah. Well, you can. Okay. But, you know, you pick your battles, and that was one that I wasn't. You know, um, I made. I actually, right before I ended up quitting WWE, I made my own entrance music, and I used it like three times before I quit. So they got it in their vault somewhere, and uh. it's way better than what I came out to. Not that it was a bad song. You know, it was a good song. I just, I didn't really vibe with it. So. Have you seen the comments online for your I'm Coming uh, song? The comments are always like, oh, uh, I always say that during sex or... <laughs> Dude, I actually had, you know, it's, it's weird when fans come up and they share 
things with you. At a, at a signing, I had a couple come up, and this was one of the weirdest but funniest things I've ever had. The guy had a United States Championship belt. He wanted me to sign it. His wife was like, you are his absolute favorite. You know, he would do my whole, you know, entrance in the house and whatnot. And she, she, the wife told me, because he was standing there kind of sheepish. The wife told me that for his birthday, she allowed him oh, no. to have sex with her, with the U.S. Championship belt on, and to say, I'm coming and do the whole thing during her. And, I, and I'm sitting there looking at these people, and I'm like, <laughs> I could have gone the rest of my life without hearing this story. I didn't, I didn't need to know that. That's way too intimate to share with me. But I guess I should be flattered that you <laughs> wanted to bring me into your bedroom. And I, so kudos to her for being an awesome wife and going, okay, for your birthday, I'll let you do it. And then we're done with it. So. That may be the best story I've ever it, heard. It, it, it's one of the best. Absolutely one of the best. I don't think we can top that. Where do you go from there, right? <laughs> Always good to see you. Thank you so much. Take care. Man. Look forward to seeing you in the ring. Collar and elbow. Collar and elbow. Promo code MVP. I can't stop laughing about that story he told there at the end. That was the strangest, most interesting wrestling sex story I've ever heard. Um, so you're welcome for sharing that with us. Makes me feel a little funny in my belly. Uh, we learned a lot there uh, during that interview. MVP does not like intergender wrestling, but I mean, he has a totally valid point in the way that he presents that, and I appreciate what he was saying there. Do you think that Ronda Rousey could beat him? I'd love to hear what you think about that. Also, I love that he's coming back to WWE when CM Punk comes back to WWE. So like, that'll be like super soon, right? No. Here it is one more time, um, the new collar and elbow shirt. Since we pointed that out during the interview, there's a closer look at it. MVP has his code, MVP. I have a code as well, CVV10. The link is below. Uh, you can check that out. So you can use his code or you can use my code. Uh, you can also subscribe right here. And I'll link up my old MVP interview, old, it's from last year, uh, right here. He talked about uh, maybe possibly returning at the Royal Rumble at that time. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll see you soon. We've got some more on the way.